you very, very much, Dr. Pinto. Our next presentation is actually from uh, Professor Gilles Mondelescott. He's actually at the <coughs> Institute de Cardiology in Paris, and he'll be presenting early aldosterone <laughs> blockade and acute myocardial infarction, the randomized albatross trial. Dr. Williams, thank you. Good morning. Um, aldosterone is a stress hormone which is released uh, acutely uh, in uh, myocardial infarction, and uh, this uh, hormone has uh, deleterious cardiovascular effects, so it makes sense to try to block this hormone. And uh, you can see on this slide that uh, uh, when you have high levels of uh, aldosterone in acute MI, it's uh, directly rela related to clinical outcome, in particular to uh, mortality. Uh, we have seen this uh, uh, concept studied before in heart failure patients, and uh, it was studied with success in these patients having heart failure after a myocardial infarction. And in this uh, study, Eplanin was compared to placebo, and Eplanin, which is a drug blocking aldosterone, was uh, able to reduce mortality. The uh, investigators uh, performed also a subset analysis, and they showed that Actually, uh, the benefit was confined to the uh, patients who were treated early, but early in the study was between three and seven days after myocardial infarction. So the time window of the first three days after MI was not evaluated. So the idea was to uh, test the concept in uh, all comers with acute myocardial infarction uh, presenting uh, to the hospital, and uh, we randomized these patients with or without ST uh, segment elevation in the first 72 hours to uh, receive this uh, regimen of aldosterone blockade or to have just uh, a standard of care. And we, we randomized uh, 1,600 patients as early as possible, some of these patients being randomized in the ambulance. The primary endpoint of this study was uh, a composite of deaths, resuscitated uh, cardiac deaths, uh, severe ventricular arrhythmias, indications for defibrillator and heart failure, and that was evaluated at six months. You have the baseline uh, characteristics on this slide. The two uh, groups were well matched. Um, uh, it's mostly a STEMI uh, trial, as you can see. Three quarters of the population are ST elevation myocardial infarction, and uh, there is no heart failure in the study almost. Uh, no prior heart failure, one percent. And as you can see, 92% of patients were in KILIP class one, so no heart failure at the time of presentation. So representing, I believe, uh, the uh, typical myocardial infarction that we see in, in the departments of cardiology. LV ejection fraction was well preserved, 50% on average, so a big difference with uh, the FSU study. This is a primary point, and we did not observe uh, uh, an impact of aldosterone blockade on this primary endpoint, and actually the two curves were superimposed from uh, randomization to six months. So a different result from what we have observed in the heart failure. When we looked at uh, the secondary endpoints, uh, the data were consistent, and there was no significant difference for these secondary endpoints, arrhythmias, heart failure, um, recurrent myocardial infarction. As expected, we observed an excess of hyperkalemias with uh, this regimen that was expected, and uh, 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 the numbers actually are lower than what we uh, would have expected, expected on the basis of the previous studies. As you can see, there is a trend here, which is a numerical trend on mortality and uh, uh, in favor of aldosterone blockade, and uh, we had also, in the pre-specified subgroups, one subgroup with a significant interaction that was a subgroup of STEMI patients versus N-STEMI patients. And when we looked at mortality, there was a significant interaction there. Uh, of course, this is a secondary endpoint, but this is probably the most important secondary endpoint. And uh, uh, this is also the most uh, important uh, pre-specified subgroup. When we looked at deaths in STEMI patients, we observed a significant reduction of mortality in this uh, STEMI uh, subgroup. So, um, this is an intriguing uh, uh, finding uh, that deserves um, uh, confirmation, of course. Literally speaking, this is a hypothesis generating. So in conclusion, despite a strong preclinical rational and favorable clinical data from registries and small randomized studies, the Albatros trial failed to show a benefit of aldosterone blockade initiated early in myocardial infarction when heart failure is, in general, not present. <laughs> 
The Albatross study highlights the relative safety of the elder stone blockade used in the study. Our finding of a mortality reduction associated with early elder stone blockade in STEMI patients needs confirmation in future studies dedicated to these patients. Meanwhile, the results of the Albatross study do not warrant the extension of aldosterone blockade to MI patients without heart failure. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Montalisco. Open for questions. Yes, sir. Uh, Ed Sussman with uh, MedPage Today. Um, <clears throat> your point on STEMI begs the question, are there is, are there studies being organized to study this combination just in STEMI patients? Uh, very, very good point. I, I'm afraid it will be very difficult to see confirmation of this for various reasons. Uh, uh, as you may know, uh, these drugs are, are generic drugs. The cost of uh, spironolactone in my country is uh, the cost of aspirin. So there is no business to make uh, on these drugs. Eplerinone is turning generic also. So you, you will not see probably a study done in STEMI patients with one of these drugs. The um, only hope we may have is to see studies conducted with the third generation of, the, of this class. And uh, these drugs are in phase two. Uh, we may expect to attract attention to uh, myocardial infarction for these new drugs or to see um, you know, some uh, uh, health authorities funding uh, studies with uh, generic drugs like it was the case uh, here but uh, I'm afraid we won't see a confirmation of, uh, of this for a long time. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, just as a follow-up for that, uh, Dr. Williams, can you um, um, comment, do you think the information that we're seeing in this tri trial has, will have any um, impact on clinical practice? Do you think doctors will use this combination in, in STEMI? It's, it's a good point. I, I think the data were so strong in heart failure, including in heart failure after myocardial infarction. We performed and published last year as a reminder study in STEMI patients where we had positive results. Uh, these patients had no heart failure, but uh, the primary endpoint was driven by the levels of BNP, which is not a clinical endpoint. So, there was a temptation to uh, go further and enlarge myocardial infarction to treat these patients with this kind of drug. I think we should refrain on the basis of this study uh, because uh, we didn't see a signal globally. Uh, but, you know, what, with what we see in STEMI patients, it would deserve further studies. Melissa Walton, Shirley, the heart.org. I'm just sorry, uh, the slide, what was the percent mortality reduction suggested in the STEMI population? The hazard ratio is, is 0.20, so it's, it's right here. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? 